Since December 19th, the United States has detected more than 200 cases of avian influenza. Those instances together total over 45 million affected birds. Nebraska confirmed its first case on May 12th in Dixon County. The Nebraska Department of Agriculture announced Thursday the state would cancel all poultry events through January 1st, 2016. On Thursday, we spoke with Nebraska Department of Ag Director Greg Abbott to learn more about the virus's impact in the state. Well, right now we have three commercial flocks and one backyard flock that have been diagnosed in, uh, with avian influenza. We're in the process of uh, depopulation and disposal. Two of those are complete and one of those we're still working on. And then uh, uh, we also have another uh, commercial flock that had tested positive on a presumptive positive, but USDA has been unable in two different tests to confirm that uh, positive. So we're hoping that maybe uh, with additional testing, and we'll go through a period of about 21 days as a whole process, that uh, they would stay negative and then we could release that quarantine and not have to dispose of those three million. For the confirmed cases, what's the disposal process? So we're composting on site, uh, which I think has been a decision that uh, we made early on that we were going to try to deal with uh, the disposal on the site and on the premises so that we didn't have diseased birds uh, on the road or t maybe risk spreading the right. virus that way. And so burial or uh, mm -hmm. composting were the two options and uh, uh, we've chosen composting okay. at all the sites. How long will these flocks or these uh, operations need to be depopulated? How long will they be vacant? So uh, that's still a little bit uh, unknown and I'm not sure that we completely understand that process. Once they're depopulated, then they go through a cleaning and disinfection process, which includes uh, tearing apart a lot of the equipment so that we can flush water lines, get in all the cracks and crevices between like where things are bolted together and everything. And uh, that's USDA works with the producer to have that done. And then there will be testing done to see if the virus exists at the end of that uh, disinfection process. If that's still clean, then there'll be a downtime where they give a chance for it to reemerge. And then they'll uh, test it again. And then if it's negative, probably maybe some sentinel birds. Mm -hmm. So maybe a two or three month process. What assistance from the USDA is available to those producers affected? So uh, there is money for de the depopulation and uh, some reimbursement for the value of the birds. It's a percentage, it's not full reimbursement by any means. And then since it's a foreign animal disease that USDA prioritizes eliminating and eradicating, uh, they uh, offer assistance with the, the disposal as well as the cleaning and disinfection. Are we learning anything more about how the virus is actually spreading? So I think that there are probably some lessons learned there that maybe we need to rethink some of the biosecurity systems that we have within the industry to make sure that uh, the, you know, we're not spreading it between ourselves a little bit. And uh, so I think there's some opportunities there. We still don't really have a clear line of you know how it got from Iowa to Nebraska. You know, migratory birds are pointed to, but obviously with that season pretty much passed, there's still some type of transmission in play. To close out with, there has been talk about using a vaccine and the USDA has opted not to give approval to that vaccine. What's the pros and cons of doing something like that? So once you implement a vaccination program that has pretty long-term trade implications. So USDA has decided that uh, they want to uh, try to eliminate the disease and uh, keep those long-term trade implications to a minimum. And uh, since that we would also have to develop the right strain of influenza virus and maybe that would change over time and year to year, that uh, I think this is a good decision on USDA's part, but, uh, and because the virus, the vaccination isn't 100% effective anyway. Our April 3rd episode of Market Journal contains more information on the virus and biosecurity precautions both small and large producers can implement. We'll link to that information on the Market Journal website. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says the risk to the general public from these outbreaks is low, and the USDA has reminded consumers that properly handling poultry and cooking meat and eggs to 165 degrees internally will kill viruses and bacteria.